Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and honored guests. Welcome to the Woodlawn Hospital. Today we honor Brigadier General Craig Bugno on the occasion of his promotion to the rank of Major General. Officiating today's ceremony is Major General Retired James A. Hasbargan. Before we begin today's ceremony, we will recognize several distinguished guests in the audience. We are pleased to recognize General Bugno's wife, Susan, and their children, Stephanie, Heather, Cameron, and Caitlin. <coughs> also, Major General Dean Cinco, Colonel Retired Barbara Hasbargan, Dr. Kenneth Hoff, Fulton County Medical Clinic, Mr. John Alley, Woodlawn Hospital, Dr. Robert Poffenbarger, Fulton County Board of Health, Chief and Sergeant Major Retired Tom Butler, Rochester Fire Department, and soldiers who have served with General Budno over the last 31 years. Thank you all for sharing this occasion with General and Mrs. Budno. It is my pleasure to introduce Major General Haswarden. Thank you. I don't know where I should start with Craig, because he and I go way back. Um, Just get there quickly. <laughs> it's hot. We've spent some hot times together. We've spent some cold times together. We've spent a lot of time together over the years. Um, Craig and I served in the 337th Combat Support Hospital and uh, then took a side trip to uh, Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, we called it a hardship tour, at least for our families. Uh, but they're both he here, so I better be careful what I say about that trip. Uh, we did that in support of Joint Endeavor and uh, got to know each other a lot better during that trip. Craig was somebody that I've worked with for, like I said, a long time. One of the hardest things I ever did was uh, relieve a commander uh, that was scheduled to take a hospital overseas. Um, at that time, we thought they were going to Iraq. And I had to relieve this commander and after doing that, which was an ugly thing, the next ugly thing I had to do was find somebody to replace him. And uh, it was ugly because it was, I was having to uproot somebody on very short notice uh, to go potentially in harm's way. And uh, Craig was the man I chose for that. He, I chose him for that because he was the best we had. And he uh, did an outstanding job there, and he's done an outstanding job ever since then. The, uh, there used to be a book a long time ago called The Peter Principle. The Peter Principle was uh, the fact that Everybody continues to get promoted till they reach their level of incompetence, both in the civilian sector and the military sector. I was telling Craig today that uh, he still hasn't gotten to the level of the Peter Principle, and it's uh, refreshing to see him be as successful as he has. The fact that all of you are here to celebrate with him today is a testament to the kind of person he is. And so without further ado, uh, we'll move on. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of General Bugno, I will occasionally make remarks during this ceremony in order to clarify actions for our non-military guests. Significant actions in our military, such as assignments, awards, and promotions, are governed by documents called orders. The reading of these is referred to as publishing the orders. 
ceremonial reading of the orders is preceded by the phrase, attention to orders, and calls the military members of the audience to attention. United States military decorations were first awarded by General George Washington in 1782 to recognize singularly meritorious action. Since that time, a system of decorations developed to recognize service, achievement, or valor. Will the official party please stand? Attention to orders. Publish the order. To all who shall see these presents greeting, this is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, 20 July 1942, has awarded the Legion of Merit to Brigadier General Craig A. Bugno, United States Army, 3rd Medical Command. For exemplary mer meritorious service while serving as Deputy Commander, Medical Professional Services, 3rd Medical Command, Deployment Support, Forest Park, Georgia, from 1 June 2009, 13 October 2011. His exceptional contributions to the command which oversees five subordinate medical brigades consisting of over 7,000 soldiers has been critical to the success of 3rd Medical Command mission. His actions reflect great, great credit upon him, 3rd Medical Command, deployment support, and the United States Army. Brigadier General Bugno's distinguished performance of duty represents exemplary achievement in the finest traditions of the United States Army. By order of the Secretary of the Army, signed David M. Rodriguez, U.S. Army Forces Command, General U.S. Army Commanding. Eddie. United States Army, a system of bars designates the junior rank, the rank of junior or company grade officers. More senior officers, also called field grade officers, wear oak leaves or eagle of the United States. General officers wear silver stars. The promotion ceremony consists of removing the current rank insignia and replacing them with the insignia of the promotion rank and will be followed by the commissioned officer's oath of office. General Hasbargan will assist Mrs. Bugno with the rank exchange. Attention to orders. Publish the order. Department of the Army, General Officer Management Office, 200 Army Pentagon, Washington, D.C. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and the abilities of Brigadier General Craig A. Bugno. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the reserve of the Army to grade of Major General effective 22 May 2012 by the order of the Secretary of the Army. General Bugno's daughters, Stephanie, Heather, and Caitlin, will now assist their father with remaining uniform symbols of rank.
I, Craig, Alan Bugno. Having been appointed a Major General of the United States Army, I solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. General Budna's son Cameron will now assist in the presentation of the two-star flag. The Army authorizes individual flags to general officers. The flags consist of white stars upon a colored background with a gold fringe. Most Army General Officer flags are scarlet, however the Medical General Officer's flags are maroon, the color of the Army Medical Department. This flag, signifying the presence of medical, a medical Major General, will be present at all official military functions hosted by General Budno and will be displayed in his office. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce Major General Budna. chosen to have this ceremony at home and since I'm not 175 miles away from home I'm no longer an expert at whatever I'm going to say <laughs> but uh, what I do want to say is thank you uh, thank you for all of you who've come to share this moment with Sue and I I also want to say thank you to some very special people, uh, and I'll uh, go in no special order. Uh, so thank you to Dr. Ken Hoff for allowing me the latitude to pursue this passion. Uh, it's caused uh, more than one problem for him, <laughs> I'm sure. And thank you to uh, Mr. Alley and, and what, as he represents Woodlawn Hospital that has cut me breaks a number of times uh, in getting stuff done because I was uh, not around. Uh, I also want to reminisce a little bit and say thank you to some uh, people that I always think of as, as very young uh, because that's how I met them. Uh, they were sitting in the audience in uniform. Uh, Colonel Jim Snyder over here, who has been my good friend for uh, well over 25 years, uh, who has the probably the singular honor to be the longest serving commissioned officer in the Army. With, he, he wanted to be very clear with me it's not 43 years, but it's 43 and three quarters years. <laughs> uh, quite an achievement that he has been able to continue to serve, uh, and now he's in his final assignment as the commander of the 804th Medical Brigade, Devon, Massachusetts. Um, 
and we'll be going to see him uh, relinquish that uh, not too long from now. Someone who has provided me tremendous support and tremendous reorientation whenever I've gone off on a tangent. We also have here uh, retired Colonel Norm Cummins and Lieutenant Colonel Cindy Waggy, who have both been dear friends for almost the same amount of time. I have Colonel Mary Bulk, who I met when she was a lieutenant and I was a captain. Uh, and uh, we've shared assignments and concerns throughout the years. Mary is uh, currently uh, the commander of the 5th Medical Brigade in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, and uh, really is not too far, maybe a year, year and a half of coming back from commanding the U.S. Army Hospital in, in Postco. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's uh, Joe Fox, who's got a great name, but has uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. and Colonel Joe Fox and I were deployed together, and uh, he has been uh, a great friend, representative of the many fine physicians and other medical professionals that I've had the opportunity to either work for, work with, or command throughout my career. Over on the other side of the room, uh, there's uh, Major General Dean Cinco, uh, who was my brigade commander when I was deployed, uh, was my boss at my last assignment in Atlanta, someone who has taught me a lot about doing the right thing, about suffering the barbs of uh, humanity, and uh, a tremendous amount of a, about commitment to excellence. And I want to thank uh, Jim Hasbargen here, who uh, has uh, been a great inspiration to me and really is the reason why I'm standing here now, because probably back in uh, 99, 2001, he called me up and, and he was my military boss at that time, and he said, you will apply for the general officer assignment board. Uh, so I did. <laughs> and uh, I kept applying for about five times and eventually I got selected. <laughs> and then finally, and again, not last because they're most important. My family, my wife who has, has suffered through absences and distractions, who has shared with me the importance of this part of our lives and the good things that can be done by one or two people standing up, doing a good job, doing what's right, and has caught the vision and allowed me to serve. My daughters and son, who have always supported me, uh, and uh, I often think of the, the beautiful pictures and, and notes that they've sent me at various times, and have never made me feel ashamed. So I thank you all. I want just to turn attention, since I cannot tell you any words of wisdom, being so close to home. I wanted to tell you about your army. Your army, about 1.1 million people. There are over 300 million people in the United States. Even when we include all the other uniformed services, including the Coast Guard, and including the National Health Service Corps, there are fewer than 1% of Americans wearing a uniform and serving in the uniform military. Currently, the reserve component of the Army 
is not quite, but nearly half of the Army's total strength. There are 65,000 military reserve service members currently serving actively in a federal status. Going back to the Army at large, 95,000 of that 1.1 million soldiers are forward deployed. Either forward deployed in a war zone or forward deployed in a contingency mission supporting your interests away from home. I have the privilege of commanding the 807th Medical Command Direct Support headquartered in Salt Lake City, Utah. This command is a new command stood up in 2008. It consists of about 11,000 soldiers, actually more than 11,000 soldiers. Our area of responsibility is 26 states from Ohio to California, everything in between. We have 102 units in 15 different states. During that time, since 2008, the 807 has supplied 3,346 reserve soldiers to be mobilized to a combat zone or a contingency mission. Currently, I have 798 soldiers who are deployed from 77 separate units. During the last fiscal year, we have trained our soldiers in 18 different countries, including the high seas on Navy hospital ships. We provided soldiers and equipment to Operation Arctic Care, which is a civil military operation which provides care to uh, the indigenous peoples of Alaska. And we treated thousands of our citizens in U.S. territories and states in poverty areas. The purpose of the Army is to win the nation's wars. Currently, our leadership charges us to prevent conflict, and the sense of that is to prevent any entity from making a mistake and engaging the United States in armed conflict. We are charged to shape the environment both politically and militarily. And in the 807th, we do that by placing medical soldiers on the ground in those 18 different countries and ensure that we project the power, the resolve, and the goodwill of the people of the United States. Your army is the force which puts boots on the ground, occupies territory, and ensures that United States interests are maintained. Your reserve component, especially for me, the Army Reserve, is the indispensable force that provides citizen soldiers to our Army men and women who are both trained in their military duties but also who have excelled in their civilian pursuits and so they bring a additional dimension that's well-rounded that attacks things from different angles and melded together the active and the reserve component of our army presents a force which is unequal 
in the world. Well, you've heard me rattle on about something I'm very passionate. Once again, thank you for coming. I hope that it's been pleasurable. It certainly has been a great honor for me to see you all here. National Guard, that right? Ohio National Guard Special Forces soldiers who has been in more countries than I have doing some things that we could talk about and some things that are best best left, left unsaid. But he is he exemplifies the spirit of the citizen soldier, and just as he said to me. I've been doing it for 10 years, I just can't give it up yet. And that's what, if you look around and you see a uniform, that's what that person will tell you. Just can't give it up yet.